Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the Hasbro Indiana Jones Adventure Series. This is the entire first wave. This wave is based on Raiders of the Lost Ark. It has been a long time coming, wanting a 6 inch scale Indiana Jones line. And it looks like they're going pretty deep into the character selection. Now, my biggest concern about these guys, they're going to be too short. From what I've seen online, Hasbro messed it up. It looks like they're way too small, more like Star Wars Black size. I was really hoping they'd be Marvel Legends or G.I. Joe size. Either way, I'm excited to check these guys out, but a little hesitant at the same time. So in front of you is the entire first wave. We have Sala, Marion Ravenwood, Indiana Jones himself, Rene Belloc, and Major Arnold Tott. Now I'm most excited for Indiana Jones and Arnold Tott, as I absolutely love suited guys that could be gangsters. Hopefully they're not as small as I'm worried about. We'll know here in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging. Brand new Hasbro line, Indiana Jones Adventure Series, meaning it's probably going to cover all the different Indiana Jones films, maybe the TV show, the upcoming film, etc. Sala, build an artifact. Can't wait to put that together. Hasbro. You can see the entire wave build the artifact on the back side. Here he is. Looks like he has a couple accessories. Pretty nice. And here is his barcode, if that helps anybody. Next, Marion Ravenwood. Packaging is going to be pretty much the same on all the figures. And her barcode. Of course, the main one everyone's going to want is Indiana Jones himself. Looks really good. Bunch more accessories of the other figures. Barcode. Renite Belloc. Got the villains here. His barcode. And finally, Arnold Tott. I'm really excited for him. Oh yes, he has the branded head and the bloody head. That is awesome. Only thing I kind of wish he came with was a hanger. It's all good though. So no further ado, let's open them up. All right, now they have these figures out of the package. Here they are with all their accessories laid out. They all come with a bunch of cool stuff. Most importantly, collect to build the Ark of the Covenant. Can't wait to put that thing together. We've got Indiana Jones, Marion Ravenwood, Sala, Arnold Todd, and Rene Belloc. Three good guys and two characters on the villain side of things. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll check out their accessories, height and articulation, and then we'll compare them with a bunch of different action figures from different various companies so you can see how they fit in both scale and style-wise, in case you don't know which lines you can mix them with. So, let's start out with the man himself, Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford. So here's Indiana Jones. He's obviously going to be the main seller of this entire line and the most popular character in this wave. For me, I'm most excited for Indy himself, and then also Arnold Todd. Indy here comes with a bunch of accessories. He's got four alternate hands, totaling six interchangeable hands. He's got an idol, two whips, one wound up for the side, and then one for action poses, and he also has a revolver. And let's not forget two pieces of the Ark of the Covenant. But before we take a look at all those, Let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So Indiana Jones is played by Harrison Ford. We're all familiar with him. So let's take a look. Now, no company really makes six inch scale Indiana Jones figures before. So this is really cool. Something that a lot of people wait for for a long time. I have my concerns about the figures, their height, but we'll get the comparisons after we check out each figure. So first of all, his likeness, good, not great. I can, I can see it, but something's a little bit off. Kind of looks, I don't know, like a cartoony version of Harrison Ford. Hat looks pretty good. Wish it was removable, or at least they gave him two alternate heads. Just the right amount of scruff. Something about the eyes looks right to me, but something about the nose just looks a little off. I don't know. Going further down, he's got the leather jacket, kind of faded. White button-up shirt. His little satchel on the side, and it goes underneath the jacket. He's got a holster for his revolver. You can see the trigger finger hand here. It looks like single jointed elbows and single jointed knees. Khaki pants, shoes a little scuffed up. 
It looks good. Feels a little small and a little basic for the price though. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I mean, I guess it's okay that he didn't have a removal hat or an alternate head, because we'll have a ton of different variations of Indiana Jones when this line is over, and we can swap out our own parts. But it would be nice if this guy came with all the pieces that I wanted. He's pretty close. And here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removal parts detached. I'll say, first impressions, figure feels a little bit small, but he's got the right look to him, the right feel, just the right amount of sort of wear on his shoes, his jacket, his hat, just screams Indiana Jones as a whole. I think they nailed it. But there are some parts that are a little soft, a little weak. Articulation appears to be kind of limited. The face sculpt, eh, kind of medium. The height, a little too small. So here are the two pieces of the arc that Indy comes Not with. Check out his accessories. Looks like. And let's start off with the arc pieces. Sort of a figure with two wings spread up front. I believe they go on top of the arc. He actually has the smallest pieces of the arc, but that makes sense as he has the most regular accessories. Now let's look at his hands. He has a total of six of them. Three right hands and three left hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And here's his second pair of hands. It looks like the right hand is a gripping hand with a trigger finger. And then his left hand is kind of a gripping hand. A little bit more open. And here's his final pair of hands. The right hand is a smaller gripping hand. I think it's intended to hold his whip. The left hand is pretty open. Should be able to hold the idol. Now let's look at his revolver. It's a pretty small revolver. It's all black. You can see sort of the cartridge here. The sculpt's fine. Pretty basic. Paint job. A little weak. Pure black. Here's Indy. Holding his pointy his gun at you. The gun itself, frankly, kind of sucks. It's so small. And here he is, holstering that pistol. Now, if it's into there, but you gotta take this sort of piece off and attach it with the peg. Pretty hard to get the peg to go back inside. The pistol itself is concealed pretty nicely. I love holstering weapons though on figures. Now let's look at his whip. Like I said before, he has two of them. One of them is rolled up and it should attach to his belt. And the other one here, a little bit open. Now it's not a bendy wire, but you can kind of get it out, but it's going to revert back to this sort of initial pose here. You see the handle here. It does have sculpted detail on it, but the paint job is very weak. Here's Andy holding and getting ready to use his whip. And here he is, holstering his whip. Pretty cool that he can holster it, but this little piece that sort of wraps around it, it plugs into a hole very similar to the holster there. It's a peg that goes into the hole, and it is so hard to do. It took me at least 15 minutes to get this to happen, and I don't ever want to take it out because it's so hard to put it back in that way. So if he's going to be using the whip, he's probably going to have the whip still holstered on him because, God, that thing is a pain in the ass. And then we have his golden idol. If anyone has ever seen Indiana Jones, you're going to remember this golden idol. A very, very memorable opening scene with a giant boulder, him getting betrayed, the idol, the other collector taking it from him. Pretty cool piece. I can find a ton of uses for this thing. Here's Indy, holding that idol, victorious feeling. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. And I was very concerned about his height, and it looks like my concerns were justified. From bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 6.25 inches tall, which can translate to just under 16 centimeters. And you gotta keep in mind, that's to the top of the hat, so the figure itself is gonna be even a little bit shorter than that. I was hoping these guys would be about 6.5 inches tall, like G.I. Joe, or Marvel Legends. Looks like they're a little smaller, but not as small as Star Wars black figures, so I'm thankful for that. But I wish they were a consistent scale between all the different Hasbro lines. I do not understand why they do stuff like this. We have G.I. Joe, Marvel Legends, Fortnite stuff in a certain scale. Then we have Star Wars black in a much smaller scale, and now we have Indy in something sort of in between. Not for his articulation. Starting with this head here. Of course, you're going to rotate from side to side. You can look up and down a pretty good amount. Can't tilt his head from one side to the other. Neck range is pretty nice. Shoulders. Ugh, mine seems kind of stuck there. Let's check the other one out. Mm, also doesn't seem to go out very far. I don't know, try some hot water, but it looks like you're not going to get the shoulders up all that much. Looks like they're on a ball joint and a butterfly joint inside of here. So the butterfly joint allows you to afford them back. 
up, down, around. Disappointed with how far out it goes. Single jointed elbows, but they go in more than 90 degrees with rotation. This wrist, rotate, and it's kind of a ball joint there. Looks like it has a little bit of give going around. Torso seems to be one solid piece. Ball joint in the waist, rotate around, forward and back. I am surprised there's no ab crunch or anything here. Legs, almost complete as the splits. Ball joints, forward all the way, back, not much. Thigh cut, single jointed knees, go back just a tiny bit more, 90 degrees, than the ankles, forward and back, rotate, tilt rock. So here's Marion Ravenwood. She's called Maiden Marion in the film a lot. She's played by Karen Allen, so let's take a look. I noticed I used this outfit for when she got captured. Big baggy pants. I wouldn't mind seeing her in the white dress from the end, maybe in a future wave. The likeness, eh. I mean, I kind of see it, but I kind of don't. It's hard to explain, but it's definitely kind of soft. Not quite as convincing as I'd like. She has loose sort of baggy shirt on, loose baggy pants, and it doesn't really translate to actually your form that well. This is not the look I would have picked for her. Looks like single jointed knees and elbows. I mean, it doesn't look horrible, but I don't know, it just looks a little off with this and the sleeves. Interesting closer look at her face and head sculpt. Indy was a little bit off. I think she's a little bit more off, a little further. I mean, it's not a horrible figure by any means, but the likeness to the actress is not spot on. That's for sure. And I don't know, something about her cheeks, it looks spot on, looks right. Something about her eyes and her forehead just looks a little off. It's like they halfway got it, halfway didn't. Now for her accessories, and let's start off with the arc pieces. Now let's look at her arc pieces. Looks like this is going to be part of the container that transports the Ark of the Covenant. Obviously, the details going to be on the outside, and this is going to be the inside piece. When put together, it's going to look like this. Now let's look at her frying pan. I believe at one point she knocked out one of those enemies with a frying pan. Pretty basic, very plasticky looking paint job. I mean, it's the right color, but it just doesn't look like a frying pan. It just looks like a piece of plastic. Still. I can put this in some good use. Maybe we go into Alfred's kitchen. Here's Marion holding the frying pan. Now let's look at her monkey. Little monkey here. He's got a little jacket on. Looks pretty good. Definitely how the monkey looked in the film. And his articulation, head, kind of a ball joint, shoulders, up and down above the arms, tail, wiggles around. It's actually not a bad accessory. Pretty cool. Remember this little bugger in the film? I remember this monkey taking a liking to her in the film, crawling on her shoulder. And now let's check out her height from bottom to the top of her head, standing at about 5.75 inches tall, which can translate to about 14.5 centimeters. 5.75 inches, quite on the small side of things. Not pleased with how small they made these figures. And now for our articulation. Starting with her head here, of course, she's going to rotate from side to side. The hair can go completely over her shoulders, not obstructing that. Up and down about that much. She has articulation at the bottom of the neck and the top of the neck. Can tilt her head from side to side. Shoulders, ball joint, goes out 90 degrees, up, down, around. Single jointed elbow goes in a little bit more than 90 degrees with rotation. Wrist, rotate, and looks like it's hinged as well. Torso is one solid piece. Ball joint in the waist, rotate, forward and back. You can see the belt in there. Legs. Doesn't quite do splits, but not too far. Ball joints, forward that much, back not much. Thigh cut, single jointed knee, goes back a little bit more than 90 degrees with rotation. And her ankle, forward back, tilt rock, and no real rotation there. Now let's look at Sala. He's played by John Reese Davies. He comes with a shovel, some rope, and then some more pieces of the Ark of the Covenant. So let's take a look at him. Starting with his head here, he's got that sort of towel, turban wrapped around there, strong beard. Uh, the likeness, I mean, the nose looks kind of right. Maybe the mouth, but I don't know, the eyes don't look right to me. It, once again, it's like it's halfway there and halfway not there. So he's got a big kind of robe arms look kind of similar to Marion's. You can see inside of here, 
looks like similar articulation to the other ones. Single jointed knees, single jointed elbows. He looks good for what he is. The likeness is just sort of like semi on and semi off. Now for his accessories. And let's start off with the arc pieces. He comes with two pieces here. I believe it's the top and the bottom. You see this one kind of has some legs. This looks like going to be the bottom of the top, and this will be the top. Now let's check out his rope. Nothing very impressive here. It's just a piece of rubbery plastic, bound up rope. I mean, the sculpt's fine. Here he is, with a rope wrapped around his shoulder. Now let's look at his shovel. They use the shovel to dig up the arc. Shovel here, of course. It's got the scoop part down here, it's silver, and then the handle is brown, made of wood. It's a little on the thin side. Here's Sala, holding that shovel, getting ready to dig some holes. And now for his height, from bottom to the top, about 6.25 inches tall. Gonna translate to just under 16 centimeters. Now for his articulation, starting with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up and down, about that much. Can tilt his head, one side to the other. Shoulders, ball joint, goes up about 90 degrees, up, down, around. Elbows, single jointed, goes in a little bit more than 90 degrees with rotation. His wrists rotate and it's hinged, but you're not going to get much out of that. Torso, one solid piece. He's got this vest you could take off. Rotate around, forward and back. Legs, let's kind of get this thing out of the way. Ball joint, they go out about that far. Go forward, about that much. He's got thigh cut, single jointed knees, go back a little bit more 90 degrees with rotation. And then his ankle, forward and back, tilt rock, no rotation. Now it's like an Arnold Taunt. He was played by Ronald Lacey and is one of the couple major villains in the film. This figure comes with almost everything I could ever want for him. He has two different heads. One, the screaming bloody head melting from the end. He's got sort of a Nazi-style pistol. He's got a removable hat. He's got the hand with the burned sort of emblem into it. A couple pieces of the arc. The only thing I would like him to come with would be a hanger. His coat is also removable. But I remember in the film, he pulled out this thing that looked like nunchucks and turned into a hanger. That being said, let's take a look at him. Start with his face here. Face looks great. I like the glasses. The bald head has this smudge at the top that is super noticeable. It's really annoying. It, it's just so distracting. All these guys seem to have paint problems. The Indiana Jones had his scruff just looks weird on his face. Sala had a little spot on his nose. Marion, her face was pretty good. But damn, and I don't know, it looks worse in person on camera. I like the glasses. I like his short hair. I like a suit. I'm a sucker for suited figures. This guy would be a fantastic monster in Batman World if he wasn't so damn small. Take him out of the coat. Coat looks pretty good. Soft rubber material. He's got black gloves on. Single jointed knees. Single jointed elbows. I like the suit. Just wish the figure wasn't so small. Still, he looks pretty good for what he is, but gosh, that thing is just bothering the heck out of me. And here's this figure broken down as far as he can go. All of his removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories, and let's start off with the arc pieces. He comes with two pieces of the arc, very similar to Miriam's pieces. In fact, they might be exactly the same. We got the unfinished side, the inside, finished side on the outside. And here are those pieces put together. Now for his alternate hand. He has one alternate right hand. The cool thing about it, it's got the part where he burnt the sort of emblem from the necklace onto his hand. Here he is with his two gloved hands on. And here he is, with his alternate burnt hand. Now let's look at his heads. One regular, one screamy and melting. Here he is, with his first head. This is his normal head. And here's his alternate head. He's screaming, and his face is literally melting off. Now let's look at his hat. It's nice to give Todd a removal hat, but they should have also given Indy one. Nice black hat. You can see the top there, it's got a point. It's got a little gift to it across the bill there. Here's Tot without the hat, and here he is with a hat on. He looks really good with the hat on or off. They did a really good job with this removable hat. Now for his coat. It's a solid coat, sort of draped over his shoulders. You can see the sleeves here attached to the rest of it. 
made of sort of a rubbery material, a lot of give to it, very stretchable. Here's Todd with no hat or coat, and here he is with both pieces added. Now for his pistol, kind of old 40 style pistol. It's small, similar to Indiana Jones. This one at least has a couple different colors on it. And here he is holding the pistol, pointing it right at you. Now let's check out his height, from bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 5.8 inches tall, which is going to translate to just under 15 centimeters. Way too small. Now for his articulation. Start with his head here. Gonna rotate from side to side, up and down about this far, tilt from side to side. His articulation, top of the neck and bottom of the neck. Shoulders, ball joint, goes up about 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. No bicep cut, single jointed elbow, more than 90 degree bend with rotation. His wrists, their own little ball joints, rotate, kind of move around a bit. Torso is one solid piece, ball joint is waist, rotate around, although it's very tight, forward and back. Legs, they go out about this far, ball joints, forward that much, back not much, thigh cut, single jointed knee with rotation. Then his ankle, forward and back, tilt rock, no rotation. Now let's look at Rene Bullock. He's played by Paul Freeman and he's in his ceremonial attire. Near the end of the film, he was messing with the Ark of the Covenant and it sure showed him and everyone else around them. So let's take a look. Start with his head here. Face looks decent. He's got another sort of type of turban thing on his head. He's got this weird necklace with gems in it on his chest. Kind of got this ceremonial attire, I guess. Another one of the sort of dress looking things that a lot of these figures have. Single jointed elbow, single jointed knee. Pretty cool. One of the villains for near the end of the film. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Now let's check out his accessories. He's got a ceremonial staff and then some pieces of the covenant. Let's check those out first. So he comes with pieces to connect to these poles. They use them to lift up the Ark of the Covenant and carry it around. When you put his pieces together, they're going to look like this. Now let's look at his staff. The top looks like it's made of gold. Looks like it's got a bunch of different gold goat heads around it. Then we have the white part where he's going to hold it. Pretty cool. Here he is, holding that staff. Now let's check out his height, from bottom to the top of his head. About 6.1 inches tall, 15 and a half centimeters. Now for his articulation. Starting with his head, rotate side to side, up and down, very big range of motion there. Tilt from side to side. Shoulders, ball joint, goes out 90 degrees, up, down, around. He's got Bicep cut hidden very nicely, single jointed elbow, more than 90 degree bend, with rotation, his wrist, rotate, a little ball joint there. Torso, one salt piece, ball joint is waist, rotate around, forward and back. His legs, you can see inside of here, very similar to the others, go out about that far, ball joints. They go forward, I don't know about that far, he's got thigh cut. Single jointed knee, goes in more than 90 degrees with rotation. And then his ankle, forward and back a tiny bit, tilt rock, and rotation. Now to put the arc together, we'll start off with solid pieces. We have the bottom and the top. Next, you want to take the pieces that came with both Miriam and Todd and add them to solid pieces. Once you've done that, you have the base with sort of a little box here. Now it's added on the top. Here's the top added on. Now it's added on in these little pieces for the top, the decor with the wings. Now those are added. One last piece to add. And those are going to be the sort of little sticks that'll help them lift and carry this thing, transport it. And finally, here it is. Collect and build the Ark of the Covenant. It is complete and put together. Or at least the container they used to transport it. This can be very useful for a ton of different actuary scenarios, whether it's for the Ark 
or for something else sacred or just some buried treasure etc pretty cool piece here here are all the figures in series one collective build the ark of the covenant Raiders of the Lost Ark, checked off the list. Now, there are some figures I do wish they would include, and maybe in the future they will, who knows. I'd love to have a ninja in all black, who'd be a nice army builder. Mirian in her white dress near the end. Indy, without a hat on. Maybe in his professor look, although I do believe that's actually coming. And then, a Nazi soldier would be really nice. You really have to have some Nazis for Indy to fight. But I understand... That can be kind of a sensitive thing, making a figure of a Nazi soldier, so it'll probably never actually happen. Here's Indy, with that idol. He's running out of the temple. Of course, we have a giant rock behind him. Now let's check him out, next to some other action figures. Here's Indy, next to the only other Harrison Ford figure that I have, at least that I can think of. This is Harrison Ford from Blade Runner. It's a 7 inch scale NECA figure, considerably bigger than this Indy figure. And the likeness is probably better, but it's a much older Harrison Ford. Now you might think to yourself, don't you have any Han Solo figures? I don't. I collect 6 and 7 inch scale figures, and Star Wars Black, I swear, they're more like 5 inch scale. I just can't get behind them, they're just too small. And there's some really cool figures I'd like to give for that line. I don't have any other figures of Sala, although Gimli would be the only one I can think of. And now I wanted to check them out, next to some other Hasbro lines. Like I said earlier, I was very concerned they were going to be as small as the Star Wars Black figures. And they don't seem to be, although they're not as tall as the other Hasbro stuff, but we'll get to that in just a second. I don't have a lot of Star Wars Black figures. The only male Star Wars Black figure I have is this Finn here from The Force Awakens. And yes, that's not Finn's head, it's Duke Thomas's head. But for size purposes, it gives you an idea. The Star Wars Black are a little bit smaller than these indie figures. Here's Miriam, next to his slave Leia for Return of the Jedi. I mean, my word, look at the size difference. Those Star Wars Black figures are just so small. And although that Slave Leia is an unusually small Star Wars Black figure, here's Miriam, next to a bunch of other Star Wars Black female figures, and she's bigger than all of them. Here's a pretty good idea of the scale between Hasbro Star Wars Black and Hasbro Indiana Jones. And here they are, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. They're not that much shorter. They're somewhere between Star Wars Black and Marvel Legends. And personally, I was really hoping they would be Marvel Legend sized. I mean, just look at sort of Tot next to Loki. Just the overall proportions are just a little smaller, and I find that very frustrating. Why doesn't Hasbro make their stuff consistent between all lines? It's just such a weird decision. Then, next to some Hasbro Jojo classified figures. The Jojo classified figures are a little bit larger than the Indiana Jones figures, more aligned with Marvel Legends. And here, next to some Hasbro Fortnite Victor Royale figures. And now, next to some Hasbro Power Rangers figures. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how they fit in both scale and style-wise, in case you don't know which lines you can mix them with. Since they're Hasbro 6-inch scale figures, I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the smaller action figure lines I collect and work my larger. Here they are, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. And here they are. Next to some SH figure arts action figures. Here are these Indiana Jones figures, next to four cans of citrus drop soda. Then, with some more Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are, with some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112 Collective figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And here they are, standing with some NECA figures. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures, and here they are, next to some McFarland toys, and now, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys, and finally, next to some Jack specific wrestling figures. So overall, it's pretty cool to finally get a 6 inch scale Indiana Jones line, but here's where they went wrong. The quality of the figures doesn't feel all that great, there are some paint issues on almost each of the figures, their articulation is kind of limited. Really surprised he doesn't have double jointed elbows and knees, although they do go more than 90 degrees in. Also, their size, that is my biggest complaint. I was expecting them to be about Marvel Legends size, and honestly, if it were up to me, I would love them to be 7 inch scale, but I knew they weren't going to be going to this, but they're coming from Hasbro, so I figure, hey, they're going to be like G.I. Joe Classified or Marvel Legends. Nope, wrong, they're even smaller. Luckily, they aren't nearly the tragedy that Star Wars Black is, in my opinion. 
just so small compared to the other six inch lines out there, especially by the same company. I do not understand why they make a decision like that. Obviously it's gotta be about money and cost saving, but if Hasbro's gonna make six inch scale lines, they should at least be consistent with one another. That being said, there's still some really cool figures with some really cool accessories and are gonna make for some really cool action figure photography and scenarios. There are some characters, what I would consider key characters missing, Nazi soldier, ninja, Marion in her white dress. Give me those. I'd feel like this movie is complete. Now there's also some missing figures from the second movie upcoming, and I don't think they're going to be including those in the future. I guess time will tell. Personally, I would love if they made figures from each of the different films, but we'll see about that. Looks like so far they're doing the first, second, and the upcoming fifth film. I'm sure they're going to do figures from the third film, but I heard a rumor they're not even planning to touch the fourth film. And even though I have my problems with that film, I'd still love some figures. Anyway, it's a good introduction to the Indiana Jones line, but I'm definitely a little bit disappointed with how they turned out, mainly because of their size. So, I definitely don't love them. I like them, but it's on the lower end of like, and that kind of stinks. I was hoping I'd like them a little more than I do. And it's really just because of the size. Their quality is not that bad. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll talk to you guys real soon.